All right, Owls, this is Mr. O with your next set of flip notes. This is our final unit of matter, and it's one of the biggest. I mean, we do matter one and two together, but then we take matter three and separate it out because there's a lot to it in this one section of matter. This is going to be properties of matter. In your matter TOC, which we'll do in class, can be page number 18, properties of matter notes. And uh, remember, with flip notes, you can pause, record, but as you go, if something's confusing you, please write down that question, and when we get to class, you're more than welcome to answer, and I'll ha help, happily help you understand what the misconception or where your uh, struggles are. Also, use the paper I gave you in class to follow along and fill in as we go. First, we're going to start just in general, what physical properties of matter are used for. They are used for three things. They are used to describe, identify, and classify all types of matter. Describing means being able to describe it observation based. Identify means to actually identify what the piece of matter is. And classify meaning to sort it into groups based on common features and attributes. So these are the three things that physical properties of matter are used for. Let's move on to a separate thing that is included in this unit, which the first is going to be physical change. Definition is the change of form of matter, not its chemical identity or makeup, meaning it's changing, but it's not changing what it is. Uh, it's kind of like you as a human. You change as you develop and get older. However, you are still the same DNA and blood type as you get older. For some examples of this, um, any change in phase, for example, ice cube melting, uh, water evaporating, Anything like that is, is a physical change because it's not changing still H2O, it's just in a different state of matter. And also like if I took a piece of paper and cut it up into pieces, um, it's still paper, it's just smaller shape and sizes. So physical changes, you change um, its form, but you do not change what it is. The opposite of this would be chemical change. This is when two or more substances combine, or they can also decompose, which means to break down, to form something new, which makes a new chemical makeup, meaning it changed to some new form of matter. It is not what it used to be. For example, when water freezes, it's still H2O, but in a chemical change, this has to be permanent, meaning it can't go back. So examples of this would be burning paper. Okay, burning paper. Unlike cutting paper, which is still paper, when you burn paper, you're taking paper and making it carbon. So that would be a chemical change. And when you bake a cake, you take all of these ingredients and put them in the cake. And when they come out, they are not just flour and sugar anymore. They have changed their molecular structure to make that delicious cake that you're about to eat. Finally, we're going to talk about two different types of properties. The first of which is called independent properties. And there's going to be dependent um, this is a big focus of this unit. Independent stays constant, and constant means the same with all things exactly like it, meaning anything that's the same type of matter, its independent properties will always be the same. If it's a different type of matter, its independent properties can be different. For the first one is density. You find that when you take the mass and you divide by the volume. We'll talk more about that in class. Solubility, which is the ability for a solute to completely dissolve into a solvent. And just so you know, the universal solvent that we most scientists use is water. Melting point, um, kind of obvious. It's the temperature that a substance begins to melt, going from a solid to a liquid. But keep in mind, it's also known as a freezing point, because if you're going from a uh, liquid to a solid, that point would be the same temperature. And the last is boiling point. And kind of self-explanatory here is the temperature that a substance begins to boil going from a liquid to a gas. Um, these are uh, melting and boiling point are both temperature based. For example, water's melting point is zero degrees Celsius, where its boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. And for all water around the world, those two would be exactly the same. The next one is dependent properties. And I underline the word depend because it depends on the object. This can change depending on the object, even if the substance can have different amounts of these properties, meaning waters can all have different dependent properties, but even though they're all still water. So dependent properties, mass is the first one. It's the amount of matter in an object. We usually find that in grams. Volume is the amount of space something takes up. It's usually found in centimeters cubed. I wish I could make cubed, but I could not. Shape, 
obvious self-explanatory, what shape it looks like, and the color, also another self-explanatory thing. Some things can be the same. Like you can have 40 pieces of paper have different color and they're all the same. They're all still paper. On the bottom, we have two key points that you need to write down. First one is independent properties are used to identify and classify matter. And the last is dependent properties are used to describe matter. So remember in the beginning we said we use properties of matter to describe, identify, and classify. And these are the two different properties and what they're used to identify with different objects. And both properties are valuable. But independent properties are the most useful for a scientist with matter. That's the end of these flip notes. Any questions, please write them down. I'd be happy to answer when you get back to class.